Well, hello kitties. Here we are again with another teeny tiny technical tutorial from No SLLC, except it's not a tutorial. It's a little bit of a logic test to see if I use logic. Um, logic lesson number 1501, Logic in Life. Specifically, this one is about uh, plumbing. Some of you have looked at uh, my uh, earlier video on uh, the Watts regulator where I mentioned I got a new uh, hot water heater. Well, I had some issues with that that I uh, kind of alluded to during that video, so here's the illusion right here. Hmm. Logic lessons in plumbing. I'm going to let you um, Sherlock. I'll be uh, Watson. You can be Sherlock uh, to a plumbing problem that was associated with uh, putting in that new very expensive water heater. Some of you may uh, have this kind of a system set up that I do, and some of you may want to put something in that's very similar to it. Um, so, specifically, here we go into uh, solving the mystery of hot water delay in my house after I had that new incredibly expensive 75 gallon water heater put in. So I'm pretty sure I've figured out what was going on or what is going on. Um, so I'm giving you a chance if you're a plumber or a you know, professional or amateur like myself. Uh, I'm going to proceed through my little story here kind of like this more or less as uh, this um, a lesson. It's not a lesson. Well, it could be a lesson. A lesson in what you shouldn't do. Or maybe what you should do. So we'll do uh, a little bit of the backstory, uh, some of the steps and missteps I uh, took, and my personal logic progression to come to the determination that I did uh, on what in the world was going on. Because I was confused for a while on this. It took me a bit to figure this out um, because it was a, a little confusing to say the least. So here we go. The backstory. Uh, here's a, a model of my house. I built this years and years and years ago because I actually bought my house without knowing what it looked like because it wasn't built yet. So I took the um, design drawings from the sales office and scaled it up into a, a foam core model um, so I could see what in the world it was I was buying. So here's the first floor. On the first floor I have 12 hot water points on the first floor. Specifically here is the garage. There's a two, two car garage, a one car garage over here. Two car garage and in this corner right over here is uh, the hot water tank. The new expensive one that replaced the old one. Lasted a long time though. Long, long time, about 13, 14 years. So, so I've got the hot water uh, uh, location here. And then, I know you can't see much of this, but uh, over here is the kitchen, uh, which you'll see a little bit in the next slide, a little bit later, later on. So I've got a um, dishwasher here and a sink. So I need two hot water thingies there. Um, and then back over here is the master bath. Uh, here's a shower and there's a jacuzzi tub and then two sinks. So I've got three things there. And then right in here is the powder room, so it's got a sink in there, hot water of course. And then over here is a Jack and Jill bathroom, which has a tub, uh, tub shower combination, and then two sinks in there. And then over here is the laundry room, where I have of course a uh, washing machine, requires hot water, and a laundry sink. So I think that came out to 12, doesn't it? I, I know there are 12, so I, I think I got them all. So that's the first floor. Uh, the second floor up here, now here's the front entrance over here. Here's the two car garage. The hot water heater was over here. Um, so you come in here, uh, come up the stairs. These stairs right here. So you come up the stairs uh, into a uh, kind of a bonus room here. It looks out over the living dining room and then looks out over the kitchen. So if you come in here, inside here is a bathroom. This is a shower stall right here. And then there's a single sink right there. And then over here, which is not shown because I didn't, when I built this thing, I wasn't planning on doing this, but I've got a, a bar in here with a, um, a um, sink, hot and cold sink location here. So I've got uh, three hot water points up here, a, a sink, a shower, and another sink. So basically I've got a lot of hot water points in my house. And this is the 75 gallon tank, the new one right here uh, with the new piping put in. I put the uh, foam on here. 
that cost extra. You don't want a plumber to do anything they don't have to do. They charge you about $250,000 an hour to do pretty much not much except solder some pipes together. Take my word for it. Almost anybody can do that. Oh, see, there I go. So uh, that's the that's the layout with the recirc pipe. I have a recirculating system in my house. Um, when they uh, put the new tank in, we didn't have this pipe put in. I'll show you the reason why here in just a minute. So when they came back and charged me another $300 to put this stinking pipe in here, I had them put in a gate valve right here. Um, you have to pull the spigot out and put an extension on here and so on. So I had them put a gate valve in there. And then at the other end, I had to put another gate valve in the pipe going into the house right here. Now, this is the recirculating pump right here. And my particular one is not on a timer. Um, it's a demand system. There's these little remote push buttons, and you push them any place in the house. I actually have them all over the place, all at the hot water location. You push a little button, and this receiver right here will pick up that radio signal and turn this thing on. And it'll run, it'll pump water out of the um, house back into the, uh, to the uh, hot water tank until it detects hot water coming into it, and then it'll shut itself off. So when you want hot water, instant hot water at your uh, hot water spigot, you push the little button, and you can hear the kind of the, the pump run just a little bit, and then pretty soon it'll shut off, and voila, you have instant hot water. But in my case, um, it turns out uh, I had hot water all the time before I had the tank replaced. Now here, um, some people on the net make a differentiation between circulation and recirculation. Uh, there is a difference, um, but I'm not sure which one is which. Uh, I think I have a circulation system, and the recirculation system is a little bit different. In my case, I have the hot water coming out of the top of the tank, as you do, and then it uh, splits off inside the house, and I have no idea what the actual plumbing uh, layout is, except it's got to be in a parallel uh, configuration. That is, all of these things are fed pretty much equally uh, distant from the hot water tank. Uh, and the reason I know that is no matter where I went on any one of these hot water outlets, uh, I'd get hot water about the same length of time uh, at each one of them. So it indicates that the physical run from the hot water tank is about equal to every one of these hot water outlets, um, certainly at least in terms of timing it. So uh, here's my 15 total uh, outputs right here, hot water outputs. Now, make sure you understand this. this is the conceptual return layout. This is the blue lines are the return line. So the pump is down here on the wall. And when you activate the pump, it actually pulls the water, the, the hot water that's coming out here, it pulls it back around and pushes it into the cold water side of the tank. That's the way it's supposed to work. So this is the conceptual layout is every one of these hot water points will have a return path to go to the cold water side of the tank. And that should happen when you activate the pump. That's the way it's supposed to work. Right? Now, that is different than this. I know that the, f the feed is not like this, because if I were to go up to the second floor and then have to come back down to the first floor and then go to all of these locations right here and then go down here to the kitchen uh, island, because it's in a, under the slab. So these are not like physically close together in terms of the piping. They're quite a distance apart. So. I know this is not the way it's physically laid out in terms of the hot water flow um, because um, th if that were the case, then this would get hot water instantly and this would take, you know, five, six minutes to get down to here. So I know it's not laid out that way. It's more like this, but because I can't look inside of the walls, I can't actually tell which way it's really physically um, piped. But I can tell you that um, this is a parallel feed. Uh, for sure, because all of these get water up pretty much about the same time when you time it. All right, so here's the brief history. We I, I stopped using the demand pump years ago after we had it put in. We paid a lot of money because there's a lot of extra piping involved with doing this, uh, all that copper pipe to get back over to the hot water tank on the cold side, the bottom side. 
So uh, I did some tests um, when we first started using this about 13, 14 years ago, and it didn't make any difference. Um, the hot water was getting to all of the spigots in about 30 seconds, sometimes even less. So I just, we just stopped using the daggone thing. Didn't need to push the button and wait because uh, the hot water was pretty much there all the time. So after 14 years, the heater crapped out, and when they uh, replaced the tank, they asked me, do, we, do you want to spend the money to put that little piece of pipe back in from the wall to the cold water side? And I said, well, what's, you know, what's it going to cost? He said, oh, a couple hundred bucks. And I said, <laughs> we never use the thing anyway, so don't put in that circ recirc pipe. Right? So they put the tank in, heat the water up, and we went to use the hot water spigots. And I'm telling you, the nastiest looking stuff you've ever seen came out of every one of those hot water pipes. Uh, just, it was unbelievable. And I'm thinking, where in the world does this stuff come from? It had to come from the main feed, that is this. The main feed uh, has to have been, um, you know, getting uh, corrosion in here. It's copper piping, so it must have been bleeding the copper in. Uh, to the water that must have been standing in here all the time because when that stuff came out it was nasty looking so now I'm thinking uh oh something's going on here so after we flushed all the outlets got all that gunk out of there and then let the system you know cool down uh, overnight and then started measuring the time it takes to get to the hot water some of the outlets were taking four minutes to get hot water the, the shower in the, in the master bathroom, I timed it a bunch of times. It was like three and a half to four minutes to get hot water. So now I'm thinking, oh my gosh, that return pipe was actually the feed pipe. That was my first thought. All right. So I called the plumbing uh, outfit and said, hey, you got to come back out here and put that uh, little piece of pipe back in between the wall and the cold water side of the tank, the bottom of the tank. So they did. Charged me 300 bucks to come out and do that which is partly why I had them put those gate valves in these these right here this gate valve I had them put that in and and the other one here I had them put that in because I said you know what if this recirculating thing this pump ever actually croaks I'm gonna have to you know have another plumber come out here and cut all this stuff out uh, meantime if they cut it out I'm gonna have to turn the water off to the whole house so hey being the genius that I am I said give me a way to isolate this little tiny piece of pipe right here because that's all this is a little piece of pipe so I had them come out here and reinstall that thing um, and now all the outlets ran hot just like they did before within 30 40 seconds either with the pump or without the pump so here we are think about this what is going on with this thing now you might want to pause your video here and think about this for a bit based on what I've sh shown and told you so far, because I'm going to give you my swag. You know what a swag is, right? right? That's a scientific uh, wild... Uh, well, you know what the A is, your posterior there, guess. So it's a scientific wild guess. <laughs> so here's my logical explanation. If you haven't figured it out, you might want to stop and you know take notes and go into your logic mode and figure this out. You know, Spock just died recently. That's really sad. I like Leonard Nimoy. I watched him in a lot of stuff. You wonder what uh, Spock would do about this. Well, why are we getting hot water right away now, whether you use the pump or not? Well, here it is. This is my logic. The cold water return paths um, are much more complicated than that conceptual drawing. A lot more complicated. Uh, specifically, the slab run to the kitchen gets hot just as quick as the laundry sink does. And they're really, really far apart. So it's it's got to be obvious that uh, it's not a series run. It, it's not that way. It's got to be a parallel feed uh, both in and out as far as I can see with a, a little bit of a series thing going on in, in there too. So what the layout is, I'm not sure, but it's a lot more complicated than uh, even the complicated drawing I had at first. And there's another thing here. There's a very slight change I've noticed in the degree of hot water that first comes out versus a minute or so later indicating that there's a constant slow circulation going on. And I think it's cooling over distance. Um, so if, if you if the pump is activated and allowed to run until it detects hot water, you know where it shuts off, this very slight change is not as noticeable. 
So it appears to me that there is a constant low volume circulation occurring because of the thermal convection involving the second floor returns, because I think there's more than one, uh, that sequentially run through the first floor, both in series and in parallel. So we've got a combination of series and parallel paths going in and out. And I don't think any of this would happen, that is this um, convection flow, I don't think any of this would happen if I had a single story. I think the trick is that I've got enough height on this that the hot water rises slowly out of the hot water tank to the second floor and is pushing all the other um, hot water outlets to have a recirculation also. So that's my logic. Now, those of you who are you know, professional plumbers, I'm sure you're thinking, this guy doesn't know his fanny from a hole in the ground. But um, it seems to make sense to me that convection is the culprit. Otherwise, it appears to be just magic. So inquiring minds want to know, what do you think? I think it's convection, because I don't need to use that pump anymore, just like I didn't need to use it before. But that also means that I've got uh, a circulation going all the time, which tends to make the hot water heater run more often, doesn't it? So, and let me back up here for just a second to show some of you, if you don't have your house plum for this recirculation system, whether you need the pump or not, you can achieve pretty much the same thing by getting one of these kits that you put underneath your sink. And what it does is it pulls the hot water uh, up to the sink and then de deposits some of it back into the cold water line. Not this, because if you don't have this, right, you can't push it back to the bottom of the tank, but you can push it back into the cold water line of the cold water faucet. And that's what a lot of these recirculation systems do is that they put it out here at, at the furthest point out and it'll pull the water to the furthest point out and then push it back into the cold water. Right. That seems to work pretty well for a lot of people that have not pre-plumbed their house for this return pipe because it's an expensive thing to do and you need to do it while your house is being built. You can't, uh, unless you want to tear the walls out, I suppose, and re-plumb your house. So, Inquiring minds want to know, uh, these confounding questions are courtesy of Team Gas. That's us. Geezer's Athletic Society. This is the educational division, right? There may or may not be some logic in this educational thing. but So there you go. Yet another uh, plumbing adventure on my part. It'll be interesting to see what kind of response I get on this, telling me that, yeah, that sounds kind of right. Or, no, this is what's going on. Talk to you later. 10-4, Roger Rubber Ducky, over and out.